Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Before I get into today's show, I want to show you this. This is something we've been teasing for a while. This is indeed our new exclusive color 45 adapter. Now here's the thing, this is called the Starry Night because it is black with little bits of either white or glitter depending on your perspective. And uh, we're calling this the Starry Night Edition. It is only going to be for sale and available for 11 days from the filming of this video. So once December 21st comes around, it will no longer be available. This is for sale from today through December 20th, 2023. So this is only available for a very short time. I know some people are collecting all the colors and this is the latest exclusive and then it will vanish from existence. Links where they usually are for the adapter, including in the description below. Today on the show, we are going to be doing something very cool. We're going to be checking out a couple of radios, one of which can pick up stations from the North Pole. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to Recordology. You are as excited as I am to see that Christmas radio. Stay tuned. Later in the video, we'll be taking a look at that. I wanted to start with this guy, though. I've had this around for some time and just never got around to doing a video on it. And I thought this would be a good time to do it before Christmas and also in conjunction with this cool novelty radio we're going to look at in a minute. This is a cool novelty radio as well because it has retro styling and uh, it's just cool looking. I think it's awesome. I say the word cool a lot, but this looks really, really intriguing. So I'm interested to see how it performs, how it sounds. Features AM, FM radio. Yay. Analog tuner. Is it really an analog tuner? Let's find out. Extendable antenna, aux input, Bluetooth in, AC or battery powered. I know there was a lot of talk about yesterday's video regarding the power supply. I'll talk about kind of why they do it the way they do it. Curious if they do it this way as well, if it's got a wall wart or a true AC power cord, and it has a headphone jack. Sounds good, sounds intriguing. This is the Crosley Forte. I imagine is available in a variety of colors. I got the green, hey look, 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 a figure of eight as they say, power cord, a real AC power supply. So it's not a size issue because the radio that didn't have the AC power supply I used the wall wart yesterday was a much larger device, but it used the wall wart. So why is that? The reason why they do that is because they don't have to create a multi-voltage unit. There's also some regulatory aspects of it. It's easier to get all of the UL approvals apparently when you just do the wall wart versus the entire unit. Okay, so here is our user guide. Specifications here, I always like to look at this. So it runs on four AA batteries or the power supply. I always prefer a power supply over batteries if I have the choice. Seven watts power consumption, three inch speakers. So the same size as that unit yesterday that sounded fantastic. Of course, these are only four ohm, three watt speakers. We have an AM band of 520 to 1710 kilohertz and FM 87.5 to 108, 108 megahertz, and yeah, there you go. This is also something interesting that I've seen in some products lately, is to help save power, some models will comply with the ERP energy saving standard. When there's no audio present for 20 minutes, their powers will be automatically cut off. That's like a regulatory thing. Very, very interesting. On the side, we have a function switch. So Bluetooth, FM, and AM. We got the aux in and the headphone jack. I'm glad they're not on the back. That is a good thing. Nothing on the other side. So that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and plug it in and give it a test. Okay, don't tease me for saying this, but this cable is super high quality feeling. It feels really thick and heavy. And I was looking to see who made it. It says it's by Naf Nafhang Industrial Company Limited. So yeah, that is a Good, hearty cable. Okay, let's go ahead and start with FM. We've got our power cord in. I'm gonna turn this on now. <laughs> That's funny. We've got M&M. Um, is this really an analog tuner? That's gonna be a good question because that would be almost unheard of these days. 
So as I turn the tuning dial, if we hear it clipping between stations, then that means it's actually a digital tuner. And what they're referring to is an analog control, which is fair. This is referred to as a tuner, even though it's a tuning control dial, technically. The actual tuner is a, is a component within the device. And the component within the device that is called a tuner is most definitely a digital tuner, albeit with an analog control. But it's possible. If it gives us static between stations, then we know it really is analog, and that'd be cool. I personally don't mind a uh, digital control, though. When they produce... Completely digital tuner, analog control. That's fine, but just to be clear, it is, an, it is a digital tuner. The reception seems good, even with the antenna. Starting at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Orlando and Central Florida. We need to thank you for all your donations, but you know what? We could not. I try. Hey, it's Matthew Reed, your host for Acoustics. What I really like about digital tuners is it gives you the option to fully tune into a station very clearly. It's either on or off. It's very digital, you know, it's very on and off. So I prefer a digital tuner if, if I'm uh, telling you my thoughts on uh, tuning, but I know a lot of people don't. They prefer an analog tuner. That's just me. Um, yeah, uh, I would like this to have been backlit. It's a pretty dark area and the red tuning indicator is nearly impossible to see even to the naked eye so that should have been lit up and they definitely could have done that in this device no reason not to i'm going to switch to am now i was surprised the reception was pretty good for my area like i said yesterday i don't have great reception in my area excuse me am stuff one of the devotions Teams. Those are the things I would do. Some sort of carrier signal. Not getting anything on AM, which I can't really blame on this because I, generally speaking, can't get anything on AM in this in this room in this area. Okay, so I mean that's pretty much it. But we're gonna test the Bluetooth because. That is a function it has. I do like the fact it's got an aux in. So like yesterday, we were hooking up that tape player to that device. You could do the same thing here and uh, make this device a multi-function device. Private listening is available as well. But let's go ahead and go up to Bluetooth mode. And I've been turning this off, you know, more than I should. <laughs> I've been, I don't need to turn it off between every test here. I just keep happening to turn the knob all the way down. Okay, so I am in Bluetooth mode, I thought. Oh, nope. All right, Bluetooth light is on, and I'm going to pair it to my phone. Okay, it comes up as Crosley CR3041, and I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. We should hear, yep, connection tone, and we are golden. Now let's really see what this thing can do. I'm going to send it some good quality audio, and we'll test it out. Very loud. I mean, it gets loud, but you have to crank it all the way up. quick Amazon search of this product. It is selling for $34.95. And, um, you know, that's, that's pretty typical for what a device like this I would expect to go for these days. Um, also, that Bluetooth light isn't flashing as annoyingly. I mean, it is flashing on and off, but it's not strobing in addition to that, to the naked eye. It just looks like a solid, slow blink. And it's also a little darker to the naked eye. Sound quality to me sounded pretty good. Uh, maybe a hair better than I expected it to. 
This obviously is a device with a specific purpose, and that would be, you know, small spaces, portability situations, um, and the ability to just have some audio while maybe you're working in the garage or while you're cleaning up or, you know, even, you know, is it safe to listen to a battery operated radio when you're taking a bath? I don't know. Uh, definitely not one that's plugged into the wall. But, you know, what I mean, certain use cases, not your primary listening device by any means. If I have to tell you that, then uh, that would surprise me because I think most people would realize, yes, this is definitely just an ancillary extra item. But for what it is, it's cool. I would have liked to see an SD card reader for this price point. Uh, Feature-wise, besides that, I think it's adequate. I think, I think it does a good job. It's not like a home run product, but it is probably a, a triple. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a base run. It's a base run in baseball terminology. Okay, let's flip over to a, something completely different. So when I first saw this product on the shelf at Target, I did a major double take because this is exactly the kind of Christmas item I like. When you go to a Christmas store, mostly you're finding ornaments, you're finding decorations, and some may argue that, that this is just that. However... Uh, this is a functional item that actually does something, and, and it's a toy, and it's a, it's a device all in one. That's what I like to see more of. If you remember, uh, if you've been watching our Vlogmas episodes, recently I talked about a gift shop we went to that had some toys, Christmas toys, which was exciting. And this was probably the ultimate one that I've found. It is made by a company called Mr. Christmas that makes not just Christmas things, but Halloween toys. And if you've ever seen those Santa Clauses that climb up the ladder to the tree, that's those guys as well. They've been making stuff since at least the 80s and probably before. Novelty items, musical items, but they're functional. And that's what's unique about Mr. Christmas products. So I picked this up. I do not remember how much it costs. It's been a couple of years now. And obviously it's styled like a retro radio. Uh, no specific brand. The gripe that I have about this, the one and only gripe, is that it is, I wouldn't say cheap, but it's built to a cost and it is built as a decorative item. This is not a, you know, super functional handle. You can barely fit your fingers under it. The back panel isn't tapered in any way. It's just, you know what I mean? Like, it's built as a decoration, yet it's a functional decoration. So I wish it was built more rugged like a real radio kind of like what we just looked at with that little crosley that being said it still performs well it still does some great things and it doesn't even pick up real radio stations you may be saying what it doesn't even function as a radio well yes and no it's a it's a fictional radio that picks up fictional radio audio not actual broadcast stations and that is a good good thing now i've seen this for sale in a couple different places and i've seen a couple different backplate designs here with this one has santa claus and a reindeer. It's not Rudolph, his nose isn't red, but uh, the rest of the design of this has been uniform on every example that I've seen, but that picture back there has been different. Everything else is the same. There is a speaker there and an on-off volume control, and then here we have a dial, and the dial has four presets. Even though it looks like there's a tuning dial up there, that's decorative. But it's fun to kind of make believe and just go along with it, in my opinion. We've got WXMS Merry Christmas Music now playing. Or we've got the Elf News Network now playing. Or we've got Santa's Weather Station now playing. And then back to this setting. So I wanted to play some audio from here, except for the songs. It does play songs, and I don't you know, want to you know, sit here and just listen to some possibly copywritten music. What I want to do is listen to the Elf News Network and Santa's weather station. Before we do that, though, um, I want to talk about what's inside of this device. Phillips screws, take the batteries out, see what we can find. So I'm having thoughts about what could we possibly do if it is as simple as I'm hoping. It's just an SD card. Wouldn't it be cool to add content, add additional songs? add maybe some old time Christmas radio or something. Because what happens is if you listen to each of those stations long enough, it plays through and just stops. So it's really behaving like it's simply a matter of um, just playing through some digital audio files. And if that's the case, I don't see a reason why, you know, you couldn't add to that. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm really, 
really curious as to what we will find. So let me go ahead and take these screws out and we'll have a big reveal together in just a second. Now it is possible that instead of it playing off of an SD card, which would be super convenient, that it's actually playing off of, you know, a chip or something that we can't deal with, but I have high hopes. So let's go ahead and try to take the back off here as gently as possible. Okay. So there we've got the speaker on the back. It is a 0.5 watt, 8 ohm, and now the big reveal. Okay, so, interesting. Look at the connections for when you adjust the knob to different positions. It'll close a circuit, which then activates the audio on this board. Looks like I'm going to have to take this board out to really see. That piece of foam there is literally just to give the speaker grill a realistic effect on the other side. There's nothing else to it. Two screws. Oh, wait, no, just the one screw to take the board out. Oh, okay, the knob's going to have to come off, I think. Try to pull that off without breaking it. Off. Typically when you see that blob like that, that is gonna be where the content is. Similar to like a Nintendo on a chip. It's basically like an IC that instead of being encapsulated in a plastic shell like those two others above, has the wires or contacts going directly into it and then just this, you know, blob placed over it. So it can't be removed. And I'm thinking that may be where the music is. I'm still trying to peek underneath and see if I can peer on the other side of the board. So kind of a bummer we can't add any music to it, but check out this cool relay system. Just close the contact. Ooh, that one's bent a little bit. Look at that. Still works though. And then the music plays. Really interesting stuff. Still really cool, right? I love to see how things work, what's inside, I love taking things apart, so I can't, I know I'm gonna do more of that on this channel. We need to do some more turntable teardowns. People have asked for it for the Crosley, the new Crosley that sounds so good. People are like, why does it sound so good? What's going on in there? We might just open it up and find out. But now I just wanna play for you the two programs. I wanna give you a little taste of the music program. Then we're gonna do the Elf News Network and Santa's Weather Station all the way through. Never done this on the channel before. So you'll be able to give this a listen. Now, if you're interested in one of these, I don't ever see them except during Christmas time. And again, I got mine at Target. I'm sure they're available online. If I can find a link, I'll put it in the description because I would recommend it for what it is. It's, you know what I mean? It's a luxury item in that it's completely unnecessary, but completely fun and probably slightly overpriced. But I'm gonna flip on my front facing microphone and we are going to listen to these programs. This is your North Pole weatherman, Blizzard Bob, reporting live from the front steps of Santa's workshop. We are predicting over 100 inches of snow, and we are currently showing level 5 hot cocoa and marshmallows alert. Please be sure your kitchen is well stocked with marshmallows. The word from inside the workshop is that the snow won't impact Santa's sleigh ride. The new reindeer goggle wipers have arrived and are ready to go, but with this big of a storm, some say they could be overwhelmed. Stay tuned for more updates. This is Blizzard Bob, your North Pole weatherman, coming to you live again from outside the workshop. I can see inside that the elves are busy putting the finishing touches on all of the toys for the good girls and boys. Meanwhile, over in the stables, the reindeer team is gearing up for Santa's Christmas sleigh ride, and the forecast is calling for snow, more snow, fog, more fog, wind, and more wind. My sources tell me that Santa has been in contact with you-know-who to guide his sleigh if the conditions get any worse. An update from the North Pole Weather Station. Good news. The snowstorm has started to ease up. We only received 59 inches of snow, or, as we call it here, a dusting. The storm has shifted south to Alaska, and it's now a balmy negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit. Practically t-shirt and shorts weather. Santa is so relieved he gave everyone a break during this busy time to go play in the snow. Behind me, it appears as though the reindeer and elves are playing a friendly game of candy cane hockey with a peppermint puck. The elves are up three goals to two with just a few minutes left to play before they head back to the workshop. To the Elf News Network. You're listening to ENN, your Elf News Network. Scoop Yuletide reporting live from the North Pole. 
The elves are positively overwhelmed by Santa's nice list this year. For the past three years, the naughty list has been shrinking, and the nice list has been growing, which of course means more and more work for the elves. What's behind this mysterious outburst of niceness? Who are all these good little boys and girls? In tonight's interview with Chief Elf Kringle Hopper, hear his side of the story. We are working all day and all night to satisfy the letters to Santa. In my 100 years here, we've never had this many coming in. Will the North Pole invest in more toy machines? Will it be overtime for the Elms till December 24? Tune in tonight at 8. And now it's the ENN Sports Desk Update. The hottest source for sports news inside the Arctic Circle. Everyone's annual favorite sporting event of the holiday season was held yesterday. And it was quite a game. It was the NL L's biggest game of the year. The North Pole Giants faced off against the South Pole 25ers in the Exodus Bowl. The 25ers won the game, scoring a touchdown right in the last five seconds. The Red Nose Cup was held on December 10th this year, and it was quite a game. The Reindeer and Elves faced off in an epic game of Capture the Red Nose. It was the Big Presence versus the Sleigh Riders in the finals, and the Sleigh Riders ended up capturing the Nose ten times to cinch the cup. Breaking news, we interrupt your regularly scheduled program for this breaking news from the North Pole. This is Scoop Yuletide reporting live from the annual Elf Congress elections. The results of the race between Elf Emma of the Techie Toymakers Party and Elf Edward of the Woodworkers Party has just been announced. As we all know, Elf Emma ran on the platform of video games for all kids, and Elf Edward advocated for wooden toys for all. In shocking news, the votes were counted from all precincts, including the land of misfit toys, and the candidates were tied. So Santa announced that both elves will join the Christmas Congress and thereby ensure a voice for video games and wooden toys for the next four years. Stay tuned for interviews with both of the newly elected Congress elves. And then finally, we have music. It's actually my least favorite, but uh, still cool. You gotta have music with the radio, right? I mean, I guess it makes sense. All right, my friends, and that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, consider a thumbs up, subscribing if you haven't done so already. We're just so glad you're here. Hope you're having a wonderful Christmas season, as are we. Although it's a little weird in Florida, we're trying to have fun. Again, a lot of Christmas vlog content going on over at Rain's Place, link down below as well. Mostly, I just want to thank you so much for being there and for all of your support, and we will see you next time.